Having a quorum present, I'll call to order the July 27th meeting of the Historic Landmarks Commission. First item on the agenda is public comment. Any member of the public may address our commission on any item that is not on our agenda today. I do not see any general public comment, so I'll close. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed one. We have one. Mr. DeForest. I see that by the see that the uh, AUD uh, Morning, ordinance is being uh, looked at by city council and about how well it is working or not and uh, possibly changes modifications can be made and I strongly recommend that this the Historic Landmarks Commission recommend that uh, the uh, AUD project should not be allowed in, though they're allowed in R3, is it R2, R3 anyway, uh, that where the block is uh, all single family, one story single family units, uh, that a large building should not be allowed to be plunked down there, destroying the neighborhood. Also, I would like the uh, AUD not to apply to properties within the EPV, and certainly there should be a, at least a block buffer around historic landmarks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeForest. I'll go ahead and close the public comment and go on to the... Uh, a I'd like to Commissioner Rios. Okay. Would it be appropriate for our commission to take a stand on, that, on the AUD issue? Excuse me. Uh, hi, Manny Mons, Senior Planner. The, this commission always has an ability to create subcommittees and to offer input on um, specific discussions that the planning commission is having. Uh, I think in this case they asked for your input and you were invited to have that input. If you want to formalize your position, that's fine. What, what I was having um, an issue was when you were bringing or voicing those concerns as part of her view of a project. I don't think that's appropriate. So definitely uh, this commission can take a more aggressive role in uh, offering recommendations or changes that you would like to seek out. But I would also caution you that um, there is a, a planning, similar effort by the Planning Commission that's uh, do, under, undertaking that. They are technically their lead um, role is to um, come back and meet with City Council in October. We, we often check in. And based on those discussions, uh, they did ask staff to monitor and get input for their next meeting in October. And I think this was the initial effort. So we could, we could ask that it be put on an agenda for the commission to have some discussion. I think the more appropriate thing to do would be to appoint a subcommittee to sort of uh, focus on it. No, I no? think the whole commission is well enough educated to be able to talk on the subject. I mean, we know what it is. Mm -hmm. And... Um, a subcommittee, however it works, we should. I think we should have some input in the meeting in, yeah. in October. Well, yes, I, and I agree with that. And I think that the subcommittee should perhaps sort of um, get to a focus, uh, sharpen their pencil, and get to a focus on what we want to attack as a whole commission. I'm not saying that the subcommittee okay. would be the sole decision maker. Obviously, the whole commission would make that, but a subcommittee then would, would like sort of focus. I would like to see a subcommittee appointed with discussion on this matter. Okay. Um, I would um, ask for volunteers if nobody wants to volunteer. I've got some people in mind for the subcommittee. I'll volunteer. Okay, great. I, I would like to volunteer. Okay. I will volunteer too. Those are the three people I was going <laughs> to suggest. <laughs> so I'm glad I didn't have to appoint. So we have an ad hoc subcommittee, Ms. Sanchez, um, regarding the City of Santa Barbara AUD as it relates to the historic resource element specifically. And this subcommittee should meet within a few weeks so that we can get back on the agenda here for discussion. Before, yes. So that is uh, Commissioner Mahan, Commissioner um, Arias, and Commissioner Grumbine. 
And um, if you could please try to organize a meeting time, Ms. Sanchez or Mr. Eng, either one of you, and send out an email to those people. Please include me on the email. Would that meeting be open to the public? Uh, subcommittee meetings would be, yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, just, I just Chair. wanted to make sure that I understand if um, you want uh, staff's role to participate in, in that or um, because um, given what I, I heard, um, I did not um, hear all the presentation um, that, it, that was four and a half hours of discussions. Uh -huh. And um, if you don't bring structure to a meeting, uh -huh. it can go anywhere. So if you have ideas uh, about the agenda format or some particulars, I, I would like to hear for, about it so we can try to structure those discussions okay. and make the best use of time. And to answer the first question, yes, I do think there should be some staff guidance okay. at the subcommittee. And what I'm going to suggest, question. hold on one second, what I'm going to suggest is that um, each of those subcommittee me members brings um, a list of bullet points that they feel is important to that first meeting and then as a group you guys can focus on which ones you really want to attack. Commissioner Vena. Not knowing enough to voice opinions on and so forth, is it all right if I stand in with this committee? One, two, three, four, yes. No, just stand in as an observer. Um, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, that, that would be good. Why don't we let, why don't we let staff um, Head up when we will meet, and email us, and find a date that's that's that works for the for the four of us, and, and, and let them carry the ball on that rather than yeah, trying I've, to do that. Yeah, I've already suggested that to Ms. Sanchez. But if okay. you would bring a um, list of bullet points that you think is imp important to talk about to that first meeting, Mr. Meehan, that would be important and helpful. Uh, also, if um, my, my understanding is, we've also prepared some bullet points as, as a result of the input Great. received at the Planning Commission, so that could be beneficial, and I'll forward that to you so you okay. can see okay. uh, the type of issues we've highlighted. Okay, let's keep on moving then and go to approval of the minutes of the Stark Landmarks Commission of July 13th, 2016. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Motion by uh, Mahan, second by Murray. Under discussion, are there any additions, corrections, or clarifications on the minutes of July 13th? I have Commissioner Mr. Murray. Oh. They have one really minor. It's so, I'm sorry, it's so minor, but I think it's important. Good. So, on page, um, page four, oh. um, under um, item three, it's just a staff comment. Uh, just do, put Dr. Glass out instead of Mr. Glass out. Mm -hmm. Dr. Glass out. That's it. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner. I would, I would like to suggest on, on the page five in the motion, that, uh, number three, where it says the fourth, floor, the fourth floor, because of its size and roof-like character, is not problematic. I think we should put that in, in a positive sense. And I would suggest that we should say the commission appreciates the minimizing of the fourth floor massing. Yeah. That's really what we were said. Okay. Did you get that, Ms. Sanchez? I did. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. yes, Commissioner Schallenberger. On that same agenda item, line two of the motion, I study the use of awnings on the south elevation to add more poetry. I know we did use the word poetry, but that, that doesn't give the applicant direction, and I think uh, the minute should reflect what the direction was at that south elevation. The word poetry is, it's nice, but it... How about study the use of onions on the south elevation to add more variety? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Strike the word poetry and change it to variety. Yeah. Good thing Mr. Jury yeah. isn't here. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else have any additions, corrections, or changes to the July 13th minutes? Okay. All in favor of the minutes as amended? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Abstain. Oh, sorry. One abstention, I was, I was Commissioner Grumbein. Motion carries. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> One yes? Item six. Okay, we're going to reopen the um, minutes. Which page? Six of six. Yes. Items, yeah, page six. Under the motion, item times. four. Uh -huh. <laughs> the massing models shown will be difficult to translate into EPV appropriate architecture. 
I don't know that we can make that determination. I don't know that's what we said. I, I think it's that it might be difficult. Who knows what the architect's capabilities are. It, no, that, I don't know that it will be difficult. It, mm -hmm. he, he might figure it out easily. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. well, I, I, we have said that. Uh, because the way, the whatever what they showed us, were just not EPV way. I agree. Yeah, I agree. and that's why I think that's a, well, that's a very important um, uh, message to them, that even the the beginnings of their messing was not. Uh, uh, anyway, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Perhaps just to clarify that a little bit, um, the massing models as shown. Yeah, as shown. Will be difficult to. I think that's, that that just helps. Mr. Chair, I, I was just going to comment. We, sometimes we've distinguish, distinguished it as the current proposal. Right. So, so, as, so shown as shown as, as current is, proposal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that clarifies it. Okay. So then, um, are there any other additions, corrections, or clarifications? I want going twice gone. All in favor of the minutes as amended? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. One abstention, Aye. Commissioner Grumbine. All right, next is the consent calendar, Mr. Eng. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, consent calendar minutes for today, July 27th, are as follows Item A, 7 East Addington Main Street. Um, so we, we up to final for an outdoor mountainous masonry fireplace. That uh, we be we up to final for approved as submitted. Um, item B, 713 Santa Barbara Street. This project received the review after final um, it's on. with the condition for the collar to match the adjacent wall. So final with conditions? Yes. Item C, 219 Toyon Drive. This project uh, was continued uh, two weeks with plans to start the portions of the fireplace in Draw the, west draw the west elevation. Um, item D, 329 East Cannon Perdido Street. <coughs> this project received project design approval and final approval uh, with conditions um, and comments for, for the project to be continued to staff for review of minor design elements. Item E, 635 Laguna Street. This project received final approval as submitted uh, with the note that the fencing shall be brown wire. And item F, 920 Chapala Street. Uh, this project was continued two weeks to consent um, with a comment that it needs to be compatible with EPV guidelines. Um, um, items A through F were reviewed by Commissioner Mahan and item E was also reviewed by Commissioner uh, Chair Seating. Okay, all in favor are to ratify the consent calendar? <coughs> May I have a motion to ratify the consent calendar? So moved. I have a motion by Murray, second by Schallenberger. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. One abstention from Lavoie. Next item on the agenda is announcements. Are there any requests by applicants for continuances or withdrawals? Any future agenda items on City Council, Planning Commission, Parks and Rec that we need to be aware of? Or are there any appeals that we need to be aware of? Ms. Sanche or Mr. Eng. No, let's hear from Ms. Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, Commissioner Drury will be absent from today's meeting. Um, and last Wednesday, if we already touched upon this, but the Planning Commission um, held a discussion on the city's AUD uh, program. Yesterday, staff updated the Ordinance Committee at Council on the city's five-year historic resources work program, including an overview of the proposed ordinance amendments for historic resource protection and possible designation of future historic districts and special design districts. Um, Mr. Lamone, if you would you like to elaborate on what happened? Yes, I just uh, would like to give you a brief uh, summary of uh, what I believe we uh, had some good feedback. Um, the purpose of the meeting was to um, uh, educate the ordinance committee on members that were concerned about special design districts. We pointed out that the city has a history of the creation of these districts. And um, however, there's, there seems to be some inconsistencies in uh, how we've developed them as far as stating the purpose. We did a really good job when the Lower Riviera Bungalow District was created and explained why that was created. However, we don't have a really good uh, foundation in our ordinance for the Mission Area Special Design District. 
And what I tried to do is to tie the uh, progression of the EPV district towards the mission and the boundary changes as uh, I think the intent was to try to protect the mission from incompatible development. And yet the ordinance doesn't speak to it, doesn't speak to whether there's guidelines in place for those properties. So um, we indicated that we're looking very carefully at that area to see if those boundaries make sense. And uh, we would propose um, to offer that that ordinance uh, would expand the purpose of that district if we so choose to keep it. Also, um, Ms. Hernandez is looking at the mission area and determining whether the appropriate boundaries for a historic district exist in and around um, the Plaza Rubio in the perimeters of the, the mission. So we'll be coming back and working with the Historic Landmarks Commission subcommittees to refine that. And then secondly, the other issue that we're there for is uh, Nicole outlined um, some specific criteria that we're going to use for historic districts uh, consistent with National Register criteria, which is the baseline for cities. But we also have some additional criteria. And hopefully you all received the staff report that outlined that. And so if you have some uh, input on that, we're still taking it in. Uh, we have direction to start drafting the ordinance. However, we've also suggested that we're going to return back to the Ordinance Committee and talk about post-disaster um, provisions in our ordinance. Mm -hmm. There are some unique um, problems that come up when um, a major earthquake hits and some buildings fall down and whether they should be demolished or the process that go, we go about in order to mm -hmm. allow for them to Knock be yeah. reconstructed. So I think they supported those uh, approaches and they recommended we move forward. Good. Thank you for taking care of that. Anybody else want to add to that? I know that some members attended. We, we were, we, uh, yeah, uh, Judy was there and I was there and um, Mary Louise Days and Don Sharp and Fred Sweeney. Um, I don't know the name of the fellow from the- Mike M. Wall. Mike from, from the uh, Trust yes. for Historic right. Preservation. And the head of the Trust was there also. And um, we didn't, we didn't uh, although uh, Fred Sweeney spoke and Mary Louise spoke, the rest of us, we just listened. And, and we were recognized by the uh, chair as being a, a substantial group of people watching them. Yeah. And, and we're, we're very much, I, personally I think this is a good direction to go, but, we're, but the, the devil will be in the details and we're going to be watching it very closely. Good. Thank you for attending. Thank you. I have one more announcement. Go ahead, um, Mr. Lamone. It's related to, actually, it's probably a subcommittee uh, discussion. Uh, Mr. Schallenberger, you were there also for the sign committee discussion. Um, uh, there is a group, a uh, subcommittee created by our city attorney that's looking at the sign ordinance. Mm -hmm. And we had our first meeting last week where the city attorney outlined the uh, legal rationale for changing our ordinance. Mm. And... Um, mm. The uh, concern that was expressed by some of the members is to try not to totally alter the structure of our ordinance because we feel it's working well, that there are some uh, key components that are related to content that we cannot no longer include. And so if it's content related, um, there's a, um, a concern that it violates these new um, Supreme Court decisions, mm -hmm. and therefore he's uh, trying to revise our ordinance so it, we will not be sued, and there's some First Amendment mm -hmm. issues. So uh, what the subcommittee outlined was that they would like the city attorney to uh, mm -hmm. focus on those areas and possibly offer some suggestions on how to alter the language and still try to keep the intent behind those restrictions uh, focused on um, some specific areas. Mm -hmm. And um, the city attorney also asked that the group also assist in expanding and uh, enhancing the purpose and the scope of why these regulations are in place, and that he would like to have um, some additional um, uh, policy discussions about why certain um, uh, restrictions and the intent behind these ordinances uh, spelled out. So uh, I'm asking you all if you have um, uh, some extra time <laughs> that you uh, offer that input to the subcommittee members as they move forward. Uh, I think for me now, this is actually yours. You're able to attend. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> there's Lucky a lot me. of interesting reading background. Yeah. He, he basically combined everything we know about our sign committee and the legal issues into one interesting document to understand how Why is there no forward. bow on it? Or uh, <laughs> well, it's a lot of reading there. And actually, it's they, they, he gave uh, you all two months to 
to yeah. work on this. No, and um, <laughs> thank and, you. Um, there'll be essentially a proposal developed, in, and we'll meet again in September, October. But I wanted you to be aware of this whole purpose and in, in scope of uh, the introduction to our side ordinance, and maybe we can get somebody to okay. uh, offer some input on that. Commissioner Murray, do you feel like you would like some help with that from one of the other yeah, commissioners? Yeah, and this is the guy you have. Because he wrote the ordinance. Who have, who have worked on the sign committee. Yes, that, that could uh, be, definitely happen. <laughs> you. you can pass that on to Fermina and, and Craig yeah. and okay. have so, some good input. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and I don't think totally. that needs to be anything that is to be announced necessarily. But if Commissioner Murray wants to rely on some of the other commissioners, as long as it's no more than uh, four other commissioners, feel free to do that. I'm giving you that permission. Okay. All right. No more announcements, <laughs> commissioners. Oh, I, I do have one oh. more. Or, uh, so I want to make an announcement, a reminder, actually, about the special joint ABR and HLC meeting that's scheduled for tomorrow. Uh, this is to discuss the um, wireless ordinance. Um, it'll be held tomorrow at three uh, here in the Gephardt room. Okay. I won't be able to attend. I think it's it's it's, it's for all of us, right? Yes. Yeah. But I mean. What are they going to tell us, that we can't regulate them? Uh, yes and no, Mr. <laughs> Lavoie. Um, the, the draft ordinance, I believe you were set to link, uh -huh. but the, the genesis behind this is, again, uh, state federal laws have changed. Uh, the wireless industry has some power to amend uh, laws, course. and they're essentially taking away some of the ability for a community to uh, regulate what they call minor alterations to wireless and they have a right and a time clock put on a local agencies to approve their, their proposals. Uh, it does not apply to new facilities. And what the uh, draft guide uh, ordinance indicates is now a preference for uh, different designs and installations. So that's where your input is important because we're laying out what the city would like wireless uh, providers to focus in and locations and design and that's actually called out in the ordinance rather than separate design guidelines. And the, the, the philosophy behind that is if we tell them that uh, these are more difficult to get approved, that they'll uh, navigate through our review uh, much easier if they focus on the locations we want and the type of facilities we want. And so there will still be a design, guideline, a design review component because we think it's successful if they come before you and you modify pro projects to make them acceptable. But if you have a concern about any preferences that are outlined in the ordinance, uh, this is the time to come forward. We did have a discussion at the Planning Commission, and the Planning Commissioners uh, pointed out a couple of areas, uh, specifically having to do with undergrounding of equipment. We often have this conflict with a wireless providers saying they can't underground. And so the planning, one of the Planning Commissioners say, you know, you should get that clarified if that's the focus of our review bodies to try to get undergrounding. You should state that as a preference. So. Uh, I would advise you, if you're interested in that, trying to, this is your shot at looking at that ordinance. Um, this is the type of input we would want. <clears throat> okay. Any other announcements? Uh, well, who's going to be there? One. Um, three o'clock tomorrow? Three o'clock. Should last about two hours. You'll be out by oh, five. Shit. Okay. Mm, nice. Okay. Okay. That'd be great. So three people? Yeah. Vena, Arias, and Lavoie. I'll try to get there, but I just don't think I can. Oh, you're in this room. Excuse me. What I wanted to say is I hope any ordinance uh, has a provision in it that as technology advances and this equipment is no longer needed, it will be removed. I'm sure I'm sure Commissioner Rios will be right on top of that. We, we do have some current yeah. language in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, just uh, not on this topic, but on, on just in general, I'm not sure when this the proper announcement time is, but um, for stepping down from, um, is it yes, uh, no. this one? Okay. You'll be stepping down from item three? Uh, uh, item eight. Three and, oh. Eight, two and one, two Santa Barbara Street. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, right. Yeah. The agenda. Right. Yeah. So that's so for Mr. Grumman is stepping yeah. down from item eight. Yeah. We'll still well, have I, a quarm. And that's, yeah. you, you need I to announce this. Oh, yeah. So, and, and I will work for Harrison Design. And, and that's the other that. Yeah. That's okay. the reason. Okay. All right. Moving on then. Subcommittee reports. Did anybody meet in the last two weeks? I met um, with the um, sign committee. Um, Commissioner Schellenberger was there as well. 
um, during the later part, but we talked specifically about the City of Santa Barbara Parks and Recreation signage guidelines. And if anybody, I think I've been filling you in as we've gone along, um, but if anybody wants to look at these guidelines, um, I have a copy, a draft copy available. We did make some um, varying suggestions on um, color and uh, material, but uh, pretty much they've got it down to a guideline package that they're ready to present. I just also wanted to characterize it. Is we have called it a sign program, sign program for the city parks. So we have an agreement on how each park will develop over right. time. Right, right, right. And this is just for parks and recreation, not for uh, any other signage. And it does differ than the waterfront signage program. Okay, so this is available if anybody wants it. Don't all jump at me at once. <laughs> Next item is item number one. It's oh, we, but, yes. Did we did we discuss the the, uh, the the joint meeting with the with the planning commission about AUD? I don't think we discussed that specifically, did we? At the beginning, oh. at the beginning, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Really. Okay. Do you need to know something else, or? Well, I I don't I didn't I. It was a it was a it was a big meeting. There were twenty or thirty people there from the community to speak. Um, it, it, I spoke and and uh, and uh, and Ms. Commissioner Rios spoke. Commissioner Orias spoke and um, Howard Whitosh spoke from the from the ABR. Um, the, the comments to the Planning Commission were predominantly uh, negative uh -huh. about AUD, uh, not only a, a, on issues of parking, which staff is saying they want to review the parking, but there were lots of comments about the intrusion of these large uh, developments into what is essentially single-family houses, even though they're zoned R3 and R, you know, R, R2 and R3. And um, I think that, that I guess our, our committee is going to review this. That's what we talked about earlier. Okay. But I don't think we talked about this specific I meeting. It was, it, I think it was uh, maybe a, a Mr. Lamont, com Commissioner or... Lodge would like to come forward and. Ms. Lodge, do you have anything to add to that that you care to add to it? Sheila? Ms. Lodge, do you have anything you'd like to add to the <laughs> discussion on the AUD program from the Planning Commission standpoint? If so, you would need to come forward. Don't let me twist your arm. I'm very concerned about the AUD program because it isn't producing what it was supposed to produce. Housing, rental housing that is affordable to middle income households. Mm -hmm. uh, it's upper middle income. And um, I guess I was pretty naive about when we said, okay, you can have a fourth floor within 45 feet, yeah. that we were actually giving property owners a third more land. I just, that just hit me the other day. Plus the one parking space mm -hmm. uh, allowance instead of two per unit. So I made some suggestions at the Planning Commission meeting about what I would like to see, and I'm preparing a memo, um, which I can send to you if you're, if you're interested, because I see how you struggle mm -hmm. with these mm -hmm. projects. Mm -hmm. I think you should have more, be given more authority. You should be given more support. If the Planning Commission isn't going to be doing it, you should be able to, to make them good projects. Mm -hmm. Given, however, there is a huge reluctance on the part of some of the council members to even touch it. Yeah. And there seems to be on staff sort of uh, an attitude that the ordinance is sacrosanct and if, if any changes are made, it's going to be like doing the general plan update all over right. again or something, which of course it's not. So uh, I just met today with one of the council members who doesn't feel that way and is hoping that some changes can be made, which will result 
and getting more for the community, what we had okay. hoped for. No, I appreciate that. Thank you, and I'm glad okay. I called you up. So, okay. thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, um, we are 15 minutes behind. The first item on the agenda is a miscellaneous action item for one one. <coughs> Excuse me, 1116 Garden Street. This is a review of uh, staff report and um, designate uh, as a structure of merit the Brownsville House, a Queen Anne style house constructed circa 1880, located at 116 Garden Street. Ms. Hernandez, please. Thank you, Chair Suiting and Commissioners. I, um, it's my favorite season, and that's the Mills Act season because I love going and working with the homeowners on all these detailed restoration programs they're doing. And I just wanted to remind you um, some of the qualifications for the program. We allow eight applications a year, and this year we received eight. And um, to qualify for the Mills Act, the buildings do have to be designated structures of merit or landmarks, and the property value cap is $1.5 million, and they can um, request an exemption to that cap um, based on your recommendations from City Council. In the past, we've had three projects go to Council to receive that ex cap exemption. That would be the Fielding Institute House, the Pearl Chase House, and the house in the Lower Riviera, one of the ones that we reviewed. Um, so I have reviewed all these applications with the subcommittee before we've come here today. And to divide up the eight projects, we're going to review four today and four in late August and September. Great. Um, of the four today, we have two that um, are requesting designation as, as structures of merit. Okay. Two are already designated landmarks. And three of the projects today will be needing an exemption um, on the cap from city council. Okay. So on that, we will get started. Um, the first um, candidate is the Brownsville, Brownsville House on 111 Garden Street. Um, this residence was constructed in 1880 in the Queen Anne style. Um, it is located just um, past Figueroa on the corner of Lloyd Avenue. And I have a picture later, but this whole block is these big blocky apartment buildings. So I. I kind of think this is the building that draws your eye and it really stands as the queen of the street really there. Mm. Um, <laughs> it does qualify under Criterion A as um, it is an original Queen Anne building. It was, we name our historic buildings after the original owner and the earliest owner on record was Edwin Brownsville. And um, as many of you know, the Queen Anne style was really popular in the late 1880s and 1890s. We have examples surrounding downtown, but predominantly on the lower west and upper west sides along De La Vina, Bath, Chapala, um, and fewer on this side. So this is one of the few that are on the east side of State Street. And as an original Queen Anne building, it is a contributor to the heritage of Santa Barbara. Um, the house has the character-defining features of the Queen Anne style and its decorative trim work. The delicate central gable with fish scale shingles, the picturesque quality of the style is really achieved through these intricate roof line sil silhouettes. The front dormer is um, echoed in the gable and the decorative patterns and of the upper window sashes, which are echoed in the front door. It's really quite lovely. Um, the building um, does embody outstanding attention to design. With, with the steep pitches of the roof gables, it adds such height and grandeur to the building. And um, it really defines the geometry of the Queen Anne's architecture and is summarized in the decor of those gables. The variation in the wall textures with those fish scale shingles under the gable and the um, contrasting with the wide weatherboards is um, a hallmark of the style, as well as the large front porch. This building does have an ashlar cut sandstone wall on the front property line that demonstrates outstanding attention to materials and craftsmanship. And here's that picture of this house sitting on the corner with its blocky neighbor. And I think um, this um, really does grab the eye on the street. And it has been there since 1880 and um, really gives elegance over Garden Street and strength to this block. And it's one of the last historic buildings on the block. And so I think it's a familiar and visual element of the surrounding neighborhood. And the building, um, I've discussed with you before, they have opened the enclosed front porch and found the original spindles, which will be part of their restoration plan. And with that porch restored, the building will really have a very high um, 
level of integrity of location, setting, design, materials, and workmanship. And I, do, I and the designation subcommittee do recommend that the HLC designate the Brownsville House as a structure of merit. Okay, thank you. I will open public comment. I <coughs> do not have any speaker slips, so I'll close public comment. Ask the commission if they have any questions or comments, or would somebody like to make a motion? And I have some specific language on the motion. And that would be to adopt resolution 2016-4 to designate as a structure of merit the house located at 1116 Garden Street. So moved. Second. Okay, we had a motion by LaFoy, a second by um, Mahan. Under discussion, any discussion? No? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is item number two. It's also a miscellaneous action item for the same address, 1116 Garden Street. This is review of the proposed Mills Act Program 10-year rehabilitation plan and make a recommendation to the Community Development Director to execute a historic property contract. Ms. Hernandez. Yeah, I um, went in the house and took some pictures of some of the work that they're undertaking right now. They are... Um, the family bought the house. It was had been neglected for years as rental housing, and they are restoring it top to bottom. And they bought the house earlier this year and went through consent review with Bill um, on some of the exterior changes. They are doing electrical plumbing with insulated copper piping. They're doing seismic upgrades, drywalling the entire interior and adding HVAC. They're going to restore all the 1888 windows, and they're going to install um, an outdoor deck um, so they can have an outdoor patio. Um, they're putting in new frame, framing and carpentry and um, making, you know, rebuilding and replacing existing living spaces. And they're going to do um, a lot of landscaping. They're going to put a redwood fence on the southeast side and construct a rear parking space and paint the entire exterior. Mm -hmm. And then, as we discussed, they're going to be doing um, restoring all the spindle work and the chamfered wow. porch columns and railing. That's going to be fabulous. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. No, um, I will open public comment. Do not have any speaker slips. I'll close public comment and ask the commission if they have any questions or comments or somebody would like to make a motion. Question. Okay. We, we actually have uh, one question first, and then I have some specific language for the motion. So, Commissioner Schallenberger, question. Well, just on the, um, the value for landscaping, it... 3,000 just doesn't seem like it'll get much for, for I, I don't think that's the intent, though. I, I think they're proposing a lot more landscaping than that, that amount. But I don't know if there's a limitation on the uh, Mills Act. Uh, I think you know. the Mills Act does have a limitation on the landscaping, don't they? The evaluation? Yeah, I mean, it has to be for the benefit of the house. But some they do do some. It's just no, they give me the... Do, do, but do, doesn't the Mills Act have a um, limit on the valuation that they will include towards their credit? Oh, from the yeah. assessor side? With, no, or, I don't no. think so. I'm saying that they've only allocated $3,000 for landscaping, including the fence. Mm -hmm. Right. That's not hardly any landscaping. But I don't think that's the intent. I think they're doing a lot more than that. If I could comment on that. Um, the, the way you should have reviewed the 10-year rehabilitation plan is what we're looking for is a representation of the total uh, renovations that are occurring. Um, it's not a limit on the quantity of landscaping they can propose. They can put in $30,000. What the city is looking for is a commitment mm -hmm. to make sure that the mm -hmm. tax abatement quantity right, right. is reinvested into the home. Yeah, that's so right. that's how that's, we should that's, view it. That's what I think and he was so trying you, to say. So yeah. you might be seeing more extensive landscaping. Yeah. This is just yeah. giving us an allocation that there are some Perfect. That's, that's sort of what I understood as well. Okay. Um, so just to, um, uh, any other questions or comments? Um, just to um, vocalize the uh, language of the motion, Motion would be to authorize the community development director to execute a historic resource, excuse me, a historic property contract for the house located at 1116 Garden Street. Somebody want to make a motion to that move. effect? And add to the motion with appreciation from Landmarks Committee for their work. Absolutely. Can we add that? I was going to Second. add that at the end, but uh, we had a motion by Arias. I think Megan was the second. Who? Oh, Schellenberger. Schellenberger, second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Doesn't matter who it is. 
motion carries. Sorry about that, Commissioner Vena. Okay, next item on the agenda is item number three. This is a miscellaneous action item for 1919 Santa Barbara Street. This is review of staff report uh, to designate as a structure of merit the Anderson House, a vernacular American four square, yay, style house <laughs> constructed in 1903, located at 1919 Santa Barbara Street. And the other day, I was just racking my brain trying to figure out what Commissioner Lavoie was calling that, and it was it's the four square style. Thank you. <laughs> and the church, the yes. church too. So where'd you go right. to school? It's <laughs> Thank you, Chair yeah. Seating and Commissioners. Yeah. Uh, just so you know, the owner of the house is here today. She might want to say some words after the presentation. Welcome. The um, Anderson House was originally owned by Chas Anderson, and that's the name of the house. We always name it after the first owner unless somebody else notable lived there. Um, this is an American Foursquare, um, a rare style in Santa Barbara, and few examples are in the city. It was constructed in 1903. And this is sort of a vernacular form of it, and I'll go into a little more detail in the next slide. The house is up on Santa Barbara Street, just um, just almost by Mission Street, just sitting right here on the corner. And the um, property was purchased this year after years of some um, pretty years of neglect, really. And the owner is taking on a full restoration um, as well. It's really exciting. Um, so I'll begin that this house, being an American Foursquare, being rare in Santa Barbara, um, the style was is purely an American style and not taken from European, as it was developed um, in the late 19, 18, 1890s to 1915, and it really faded out of fashion after World War I. It was a reaction to the more ornate and mass-produced items of the Victorian era and other revival styles. And it was plain, often incorporating, um, you know, honest woodwork and um, sometimes per some woodwork per was um, ordered through the catalogs. It does incorporate um, elements of the prairie school and the craftsman style, but it's also called sometimes the transitional period. The style really originated in Chicago, and it became very popular in um, other large mid large Midwestern cities. And typically, the style looks very similar. It's, it's usually a two-story square, which is why this is a little more <coughs> vernacular. Um, it did spread through the country through pattern books that were published in the Midwest, and the Foursquare was um, very popular with the mail order style, along with the California bungalow. It came in a boxcar with a book of directions and all the parts mm -hmm. pre-cut and was for self-assembly. And the hallmarks of the style usually are this big, basic square design, the large French porch with these wide, large stairs. That this one, this house happens to have these wide sandstone steps that are really beautiful and a low hip roof echoed by the hip roof porch. Um, the Anderson House specifically um, integrates a variety of these elements. The stucco siding is typical more in a prairie box style, whereas the exposed rafter tails and the clustered, clustered porch posts are more taken from the craftsman style. The porch has its original wood floor and sandstone steps leading to these wide, wide pane over panel doors that have classical detailing. It also exemplifies the style, um, and not only does it exemplify this style, but it's really um, illustrative of what's happening, what was happening in Santa Barbara neighborhoods at the early 20th century. Um, the house does demonstrate outstanding attention to design and detail, materials and craftsmanship. The um, wood double hung windows have OG lugs and the wide paint over panel front door is, as well as in the exposed wood rafter tails, the triple sets of columns on the porch and the sandstone walls and the foundation and steps. Um, let's see, I put past in the integrity. So um, although the house have, is going through restoration of all many of the materials, it, they all are still in the house, the original location, design, setting, materials, and workmanship and feeling and association to exist so it, that can convey its original appearance. And staff does recommend that the, uh, staff and the designation subcommittee recommend that HLC designate the building as a structure of merit. Okay. I will open public comment. I do not have any speaker slips, so close public comment. Ask the commission uh, if they have any questions, comments, or if they'd like to make a motion. And that motion should read to adopt resolution 2016-5 to designate as a structure of merit the house located at 1919 Santa Barbara Street. Any questions, comments, or motion? 
So moved. Okay. Um, adding to that, that the commission um, very much appreciates all of the work that this um, owner has done on the house thus far. Um, very important piece of architecture uh, since it's not widely used in Santa Barbara. So thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda. I'd like to vote for you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, all in uh, favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. See how they don't let me get away with anything, <laughs> <laughs> which is good. Moving right along. Um, miscellaneous action item, item number four for 1919 Santa Barbara Street. This is review of proposed Mills Act program, 10-year rehabilitation plan, and to recommend that City Council grant an exception to the Mills Act contract limits outlined in Santa Barbara Municipal Code Section 22.22.16.C.4. Excuse me. Parenthetical M for a designated city landmark property at 1919 Santa Barbara Street and authorize the community development director to execute a historic property contract. That's a little different. So, Ms. Hernandez. <laughs> Thank you. So I'll just review some of the work that is being proposed in the 10-year contract. Um, part of it is to repair the foundation. Um, they are sandstone foundation sidewalks and the sandstone masonry repairs. Here's the, the picture of the sandstone steps that are leading to the front porch. Um, repairing deteriorated wood trellis and due to dry rot, and they're gonna replace it to match the existing. They're repairing the interior plaster walls and wood windows. Um, repairing and the exterior stair, porch and stairs. Um, adding new electrical and plumbing, and I liked that she's gonna keep the old panel, the right. knob and tube, but even though it's replaced, but it's nice to see what it looks like. The old like bus type is. fuses. Um, she's also going to do some site drainage and a new composition shingle roof, repair the stucco and repaint, and then interior and exterior repainting. And she's going to, they're restoring the original five panel doors on the interior and restoring the hardwood floors. They're adding insulation in the ceiling and walls, and as well as restoring the original built-in features, which are so great from that era. She was um, replacing the um, inappropriate garage door with garage doors that match the style of the house. And that's okay. That. Well, I was glad to see in those pictures, some of those pictures that you have help helping you <laughs> with the work and that you're not just doing it all by yourself there. Um, so um, do we have any public comment on this? I have a request from Mr. DeForest. Mr. DeForest, please. I gather the owner is here. I would like to ask the owner or everybody, did the existence of the Mills Act in Santa Barbara help influence your purchase of this property? Or Okay, we'll, we'll have one of the commissioners ask that question since this is public comment. Um, so I will close public comment. And uh, you can come to, yeah, come forward, please, and um, ask the commission if they have any questions. I think somebody needs to ask the question. Um, Let me ask the question: Did the Mills Act influence your desire to uh, restore and um, designate this structure? No, I had never heard of the Mills Act until I was in um, the first time when oh. I brought my plans. Um, okay. Review. Okay. Well, we need to get the word out better then. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to follow up on that. Go ahead. Most, almost all the applications I get are when lots of new homeowners are just buy a house and come in with a project, uh -huh. and I give. We have the brochure, and I tell them you're a perfect candidate for the Mills Act. You know, we're really, you know, there's help for you yeah. and yeah. financial incentive, and that's usually how they come in. So that's yeah. why they're lots of times already under yeah. getting their work underway because they yeah. don't get them before. They, yeah, well, I, I would think that we need to spread the word to encourage people that there are tax incentives okay. out there for um, restoration of and, and designation. You know, re well, designation then restoration, and um, that would help mm -hmm. people, I think. But uh, um, again, we appreciate all your hard work. Well, thank you. I appreciate your giving this your attention. Oh, good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, any other um, questions? We have one question from I don't know if it's going to be for you or for somebody else, but Commissioner Schallenberger. Uh, yes, thank you. It is for staff. What is the limit? What what are we exceeding? Eight per year. 1.5 million. Oh. You can do eight per year, and the monetary limit is 1.5. This one's slightly over. And that's where we get in with the uh, city council exception to the Mills Act contract limits. Does that make sense to you? 
No. This is yeah. 515. It's much less than Let me Let me clarify that. Yeah. Yeah. The property, it's the whole property value. It's the property oh, assessed nice. value okay. that see. limits. And, okay. and we did that because it was a trial program, mm -hmm. and we didn't want to leave it open because you could have a multi-million dollar project that would take a lot of tax abatement, and it may, may be more of a hit to local tax intake. So we limited it to the smaller projects. Okay. okay. Thank you. And then... Uh, can you also, just for edification purposes, this door, the Excellent. go back a couple of slides, please. Yeah. I was was, I was this a common practice to put a pair of an un unequal widths with I a mullion? I researched that. <laughs> she um, has an answer. I do have an answer. Okay. I, it was unusual for me to see some. I've never seen anything like there that. There you go. However, I did find that it was there prior to 1938. So mm. I'm not sure when it was put in, but it was put in of a a while, sometime, but I've never seen that treatment before. It looks like I, it might have been a business use for some, right. you know, some type of right. business reason. Yeah. Yeah. It was even like it was a duplex at one time. Oh, but I think the mullion would be thicker to a it would, right. Yeah. Beyond, right. Yeah. It has a great little mailbox there. But yeah. Well, yeah. So I, I tried to find out what happened, but in 1938 it was there. And this, and this house did go through a period of, um, you know, sort of, uh, I don't know. Cut-ups and, and rentals and different uses. It was a halfway house for a long time, mm -hmm. I believe, in the uh, late '60s, early '70s to actually the end of the '70s. Yeah. Because um, I, I know, I mean, obviously, this house is just up the street from the house I grew up in, so I know the neighborhood very well, and I remember this um, being a, a halfway house, basically. It looks like that door might have been altered to for uh, handicapped access. Yeah. The width could be, yeah. but it, but it's but it's very nicely detailed. I think yeah. those really wide wide doors are common of that style. They yeah. love it's a forty two incher. Like that. Maybe yeah, they love it's them. beautiful. It's so common in the yeah. first way. Okay. Uh, any other questions, comments? I, Would, yeah. Yeah. I just I uh, I think well in that uh, in the uh, project description. Yeah. It says for designated city landmark, maybe just change that. Oh, just, it's a structure the of merit. structure yeah. of merit. Oh, good Thanks. catch. Good catch. Thanks. Did you see that? Yep. Okay. I'm going to read some specific language for the motion, and that would be to recommend that the City Council grant an exception to the Mills Act contract limits outlined in Santa Barbara Municipal Code Section 22.22.160.C.4, parenthetical M, and authorize the Community Development Director to execute a historic property contract for the house located at 1919 Santa Barbara Street. So moved. Second. We have a motion by um, Mahan and a second by Murray. Is there any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay, moving right along. We are now um, still about 15 minutes behind. Uh, next item on the agenda is item 5, and that's for 2210 Hudson Street. This is review of proposed Mills Act Program 10-year rehabilitation plan and recommend that the City Council grant an exception to the Mills Act contract limits outlined in Santa Barbara Municipal Code section. You get it. For a designated city landmark property. Is this designated city landmark? Landmark, or, yes. Okay. Uh, at 2210 Hudson Street and authorize the Community Development Director to execute a historic property contract. Okay. Okay. So Mission it is. So this um, was designated in 1989. It's an adobe house on the Mesa, constructed in 1924. I saw uh, over overview of that area in the 20s and there was this house and a couple others and the rest is oil fields and these were built for the oil um, over, oversight but they, they're just beautiful homes. Um, it's really great. He has not done any of this work yet. He's owned it for several years and found out about the Mills Act from a previous another person who received a contract mm -hmm. last year and came in and he has some structural issues and things with the adobe that he needs to address. Um, here's maps that you know you come off cliff and you come down towards the beach and it's off Hudson right here. Right. He uh, does need to do some repairs and restoration of the original windows. Um, he needs to do some door restoration. The front tiles, these original tiles, are they're, they've been putting ad hoc um, repairs through them that, of just like Portland, so he would like to restore the tiles. Um, he does need to repair and place the roof tiles. 
to match the existing. The adobe wall on the per perimeter is having some structural <laughs> issues that he wants to address. And so is the walls of the adobe. Um, so he needs to address some of these structural issues. He wa um, hardwood floor restoration. A nice looking cat. Oh, I know. Aren't they great? <laughs> <laughs> Those are pretty cats. I know. They're really cool. And I'm not they right. wouldn't leave me alone. I was very excited. They were excited <laughs> to see me. <laughs> they want to repipe the sewer to the main, which I think is going to be a big project coming through here. So um, Beautiful. if anybody's oh, repiped the sewer, God. it's not easy. God, look at that hedge. <laughs> Who's the garden attributed to? Anybody? I don't know. No? I, I would have to look through the landmark file, but I can get back to you all on that. Mm -hmm. And the, their, their, their fountain is dry, but... Yeah, but that Parterre hedge around the fountain and that like, five point mm -hmm. yeah. truncated star is wonderful. I'm sure it's in the Lamarck file and I'll, I'll send you that information. I can email you. Do we know change. who the architect was? I do have that in the file here. Oh, fine. You know the architect, not the landscaper. I'll, I'll look it up. <laughs> is this, is this, the, you guys is this the backyard or the side yard? Or? That's the front yard. Front yard. So you come through the garden wall the and you house. come through here. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty. Um, that is really yeah, impressive. Um, they also need to do some structural repairs to this chimney. It's having some and those lights. Festival lighting behind the wall. Building up for fiesta. And they do have <laughs> some repair. Well, this is the main side. Three years ago. This is the main. This is amazing. Um, and that is that's the end of the scope that they have. Okay. And I'll look up those that information for you. I have a pretty in detailed staff report. In here. Okay. Oh, great. So I will open public comment. Don't have any speaker slips. We'll close public comment. Ask the commission if they have any questions or comments, or would somebody like to make a motion that would read to recommend that the city council grant an exception to the Mills Act to contract <coughs> limits outlined in Santa Barbara Municipal Code section 22.22.160.C.4, parenthetical M, and authorize the community development director to execute a historic property contract for the house located at 2210 Hudson Street. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Vena, a second by Mahan. Is there any discussion? The only discussion. Uh, one quick question. Is it's that Adobe? From it's Adobe. 1920s? Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. The only discussion I would like to have is um, a, a large thank you to the um, owner um, for uh, pursuing this. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very important. Yeah, he put his application it. in last summer. He's been waiting all year. Oh, great. Well, <laughs> so patience, <laughs> patience pays off yeah. in more ways than one, right? It should be noted this is an adobe that's pre-earthquake. Mm -hmm. yeah. The earthquake was in that, 1925. Mm -hmm. right. I stood the, earth, the earthquake on the mesa. Because mm -hmm. that's not real you know, it solid. Is, it <laughs> hit everywhere. Well, anyway, time. maybe that's why it moved. Yeah. OK, so did I call the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. I thought you'd get me, Ms. Sanchez, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, next item on the agenda is item six. It's for 2121 Garden Street. This is review of proposed Mills Act app program 10 year rehabilitation plan and recommend that the city council grant an exception to the Mills contract limits outlined in the specific Santa Barbara Municipal Code for a designated city landmark property at 2121 Garden Street and authorize the community development director to execute a historic property contract. And this is city landmark. It is city landmark. Okay. All right. Mr. Hernandez, please. Yes. Um, if you all remember, this became a city landmark just this year. I am it, not sure. The Olives see. House. The, the Olives? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, duh. Yeah, yes. right. Uh -huh. So um, staff and the designation subcommittee had some reservations about this project because lots of the work has been completed and done, and it is the largest exemption we've asked for, for over the cap. But the homeowner really feels that he, he's put a lot into it and he's putting some more into it, and he wanted to come to the commission and get a, get your opinion and your decision on if we should move this forward or not. So I'm going to present the work, and we'll move forward from there. Okay. Um, it was, as you, if, just to remind you, it was constructed in, in 1888 and made into a craftsman style in 1906. It was commissioned by um, Dr. Franceschi's widow. She lived here at the beginning. Oh. The work that's been done is they had they restored the driveway and access and the garage to their original place where they were on the original plan. And this is where they did. And you all right. approved that project. Right. Right. Um, they also restored the garden to the original place and established the new drainage system, which is all in place. They um, replaced the electrical and they repaired the original wood windows. And they 
updated four bathrooms and insulated the attic. And, but with, this is a project coming forward is they have to do a lot of repair on the shingles and cladding and paint it. And there's a lot of, um, on a house that size, it's a big project coming forward. You'll see all this um, work needing to be done on all these lovely wood um, shingles. And they are going to do continuous landscape rehabilitation and improvements and maintenance. They also need to install the safety railing on the roof up here, which was approved by the commission recently. Um, replace roof shingles, install AC system, install marble kitchen countertops. And we ha we do allow, just so you know, we do allow kitchen and cabinetry and countertops as part of the mill draft. And that, that is the scope for that project. Okay. Um, I, I just have a question before I open public comment and continue. So staff's um, hesitation is that a lot of this work has already been done. Mm -hmm. And completed. And, and why are they hesitating about that? Well, because most of the of projects, the work is done in the 10-year contract, either in year one or <coughs> within the 10 years, not before we get even under contract. And that was... So is does that get into an issue then of um, the credit during a particular tax year or I mean I let me, let I me need comment a little bit more this. help on that yeah. because I'm, I'm ready to say go ahead but I don't want to um, let, let me let me give you some background when uh, we proposed this program we, we stay um, we clearly laid out a program that explains that the abatement for tax relief on any given tax uh, year and this is property is, tax. Yes, this clear. is property tax. Is the idea is that the savings in taxes would be deferred, and instead of paying taxes, you would direct those funds into rehabilitation of the home. Not go on a Belize vacation. Well, yes. And uh, we do have a monitoring program to ensure that what they say they will do, they have done. Mm -hmm. uh, it's projected okay. towards the future. It's not it. a reimbursement program where well, I've spent so much money, I and I would like to now... So mm -hmm. it, it doesn't actually benefit somebody who was not aware of the program. This program has been in existence about seven years, I believe. So um, unfortunately, sometimes folks could become aware of it after they've invested a lot of money. So when we have these discussions with our tax appraiser, they're saying, wait a minute, this yeah. is already done. How are you projecting I out? get it. Now, the discussion would be, is it fair? Can you evaluate their next 10-year program, and can they invest more repairs? What is the condition of the structure now, and could you envision more improvements? So analyzing their new 10-year program and saying, does this make sense now? Uh, because ultimately, the city wants the, these resources to be protected, mm -hmm, uh, extend mm -hmm, their life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so um, rather than have a no from the committee or staff, we thought the question should be taken to the commission to see, do you agree? Okay. Or, or it also opens it up to a fairness question of, other properties yes. that may come forward yes. and say, "Wait, well, I did the same thing," mm -hmm. and um, yeah. Okay. And, and and this work that's in question was completed within the last year. I, I believe it was. Is, no, no, here. I think it's within the last year. Well, you can ask the owner if you'd like. The, well, here, yeah. yeah. Will you come forward, please, and sit uh, where you can be heard on the microphone? Please state your name and. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Zohar Zeev, the owner of 2121 Garden Street. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for listening. Uh -huh. yeah. So my question was, um, was, was this work completed within the last, when was this work completed? In, in, the, in last, the last 18 months or 18 so. 18 months, okay. Yeah, I mean, and I think it came to the point that you guys have mentioned, we purchased the property, we were not aware, and you have asked the question, and I uh -huh. think it's a great program. Right. That I wish we would have known about it. And then we would have, would have applied. Through, would yeah. Have applied. Yeah. Uh, we've done some, but yeah. also yeah. Th there is, as you mentioned, there is yeah. there is more work that we are planning on doing. And a house like that, you saw the size of the house. Just the annual maintenance of the property is very, very high. Sure. So to keep it at that level, I think the purpose of the of, of, of the Mills Act is it's a really great uh, it's yeah. a great program. And I agree with you. It's not to necessarily to reimburse or really to maintain. To, it's just really. to maintain. Yeah. I mean. You can see from the house. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the maintenance cost of this house is yeah. more than 50000 a year. Okay. Thank you for, for that insight. So um, I'm going to open public comment. I do have one speaker slip. Mr. DeForest, please. Yes. This is, a, of course, a very important house yeah. in the history of Santa Barbara, being the first house in that area built by Mrs. Brookerhoff, or for Mrs. Brookerhoff. <laughs> 
and uh, then owned for many years by the Fenzi family, the, the Franceschi house, the son of Warren Fenzi, who was the son, the, the grandson of Franceschi, and they acquired the house or moved the house when they sold it to Mr. Freeman, the, the Franceschi house in, 19, in 1926. And they, so, and then I gathered supposedly it, this house was designated by the previous owner as a landmark. No. What? This owner had designated this just uh, a few months ago. This is 1989. Oh, that's her, um, that's the previous house. Um, that's oh, I'm sorry. Oh, this, this has just been designated. Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. So, did the previous owner wish to have it designated or not? Because there's lots of... There were a number of hearings about the house and what he the previous know. owner was no. doing, no, he did con not. converting the garage to a, or moving the garage or building and building a new one. Yeah. Has uh, that been factored in? This, I have not been a party to anything with the previous owner. The current owners restored the garage to what and, it was. And, and that's, what, and that's what we're looking at today is, is, is this application, not any previous application. So we have to focus on what, um, hap what is happening today, not what happened with the previous owner. Um, Mr. Lamone, did you need well, to I just want to comment that you know, th there is a history of improvements on the property. Right, and not so, necessarily historical improvements, right, but improvements. Exactly. Yeah, and and <coughs> I, I've got a long history on that as well. So I, I I think we need to focus on what has happened today and what is being presented today, not what has happened or is, uh, was done in the past. We can't go there. Um, so I need to close public comment. Wait a minute. I just wanted to commend the oh, owner for uh, returning the house, especially the spatial relationships of the garage and the driveway to uh, what it was historically. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeVores. I'll close public comment, uh, ask the commission um, for questions. Commissioner Schallenberger. I'm just unclear as to what our authority is. I, I don't know that, I don't know the language of the, the regulatory language of the Mills Act, if it allows retroactive um, Well. No, execution. Uh, let, let me give you your authority is to agree that there is a uh, a plan uh, in place that you agree that would improve the maintenance and um, improve uh, the condition of this resource. If you believe that so, you can move forward with this uh, plan, just recognizing that there's already been considerable improvements already made into the into the residence um, over the years and, and recently. And so your, your, the, the program was uh, modeled to anticipate that we would have um, a lot of property owners that would be part of historic districts uh, and that, that would be an incentive to these folks to not object to this district designation because this incentive would give them an opportunity to uh, essentially uh, redirect these funds to continue to maintain these residents. So it's a win-win situation. What we uh, did was we placed a, a, a purposeful limit on the value of these uh, homes uh, so we wouldn't direct all the funds and savings just to uh, estate-type residences. Now, as you know, over time, residential uh, prices go up. So we actually had a discussion with council. Would you like us to consider raising the cap? They were not in favor at the time when we questioned it, that they said maybe in the future we will. We haven't had a lot of contracts at this point that had ex asked for an exemption to the cap. Now we're getting more, the program's becoming more, That's and an more indication. property owners right. are gonna come forward 
requesting participation. So the question before you is, council wants to know, what do you think about? Is this a good candidate for a contract? Uh, I think it's appropriate for you to say no in some cases, but I think you should evaluate the program and say, at the end of 10 years, do you think this makes sense to uh, have this home, have these improvements and repairs, and will you get a, a extend the life of this resource? And if you agree with that, then vote for it. And if not, if you question some of the improvements that are, are they inflated? Do you think they're necessary? Is this a candidate that you believe should fall under the program? Those are the criteria that you should judge this uh, case by case. Okay. Commissioner Schomburger, still questions or done? Okay. So when was the application first made? Uh, early, late May, early June. Okay, so the landmark in May. I don't. I don't want to do anything to dissuade or, or detract from the effort. Okay, first of all, I want that known. I really, really appreciate what you've done. I just don't know if we're getting into some hot water. If mm -hmm. all these things that were done prior to May, prior to the application, can be included, I don't know that we can do that. Well, that's the that's tax assessor's uh, job to uh, reassess the property and to uh, appraise it in a different form. And so uh, that, that's not really within your purview. They'll, they'll make those old determinations based on the reassessed values. Okay. And on that note, actually, um, when we make these, um, these motions and we authorize the community development director to execute a historic property contract, I mean, isn't the final decision with the community development director, isn't that who executes this contract and has final say whether to... He's, this is just a, a recommendation to him, isn't it? Yes, uh, but it's, it's also uh, authority to proceed. And uh, they're going to rely on the experts, and you are experts in the community. And um, it's more of an execution, a signature, and a standard template that we use. So once you say yes, there would be no reason for him to question your decision. Okay. Okay. I have another question. Um, actually, we have a question here. Okay. And then oh, I'm question. sorry. I, I, I don't have a question. I, I have a comment. That okay. council has a, a, an final. ability, a final authority. Sure. So it's not just the community development. What you're saying is we recommend council as advisory. Yeah, as an advisory. advisory group. Group. Yeah, right. Sure. That's correct. Thank you. Question. Question. Commissioner um, Grumbine. So how does this compare, just the, the list of the next 10 years, compare to other um, Mills Act applicants um, on average? What's, what's our range? Because um, here I see the list of, was it 90 some thousand um, for 10 years as the estimate. Um, is that, how does that fall in line with other applicants? I've, I've had such a wide range oh, yeah. of, we've had people do full, you know, ground everything, hundreds and hundreds of thousands. And we've had, last year I had, you know, a tiny little bungalow with a single family that yeah. needed 75000 I know. think it's sort of proportionate to the size of the house and the, and the, the quality or the condition of it. Um, you know, I can say that this total is probably one of the higher ones that I've seen in the last, you know, recent memory, which would be a year. My memory right. doesn't go past a year. I do <laughs> so. have... I have a table. Oh, <laughs> Every project total, yes, sir. the before assessed value, the after yeah. assessed value, and, and how much tax savings they got. And that statistic, I think, is, is a little hard to digest because, um, you know, again, it doesn't list the condition of the okay. house previous, you know, to that and, 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 and the amount of tender loving care that they're... So, you know, a, a statistic like that is helpful, but I don't think it should enter really into, uh, with all due respect, Commissioner, right. I don't think it should enter into our decision making on this. And and actually, maybe maybe the question wasn't quite as clear. I was actually talking about the cost of the work that they're proposing for the tenure, not a matter of how much it changes the property value at all or not, just right. in, in terms of the... Because I think the, the question is, uh, if any consideration can be made for previous work done, but if this stands alone on its current tenure plan merit, then it, can, it seems to be... Um, yeah. So I, that, that's the question. Is, is more the work itself. I, I, let, me, let me just comment that if you're if you're familiar with the tax structure, it's essentially one percent every year. And so, um, if you have a two million dollar home, it's twenty thousand dollars of tax bill, approximately mm -hmm. up or mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. So what we would like to see is at least you divert that expected savings from that tax bill towards that program. Right. So. Um, 
if uh, the tax abatement is, let's say, 50%. So instead of your tax bill being 20000 it may be closer to ten or eight something. So that's your new tax bill. So those $12,000 per year over 10 years is $120,000. Mm -hmm. So if you're above that $120,000, which I think he's in indicating he's, he's in that probably range uh, going forward, then it's a, it, it is a fair... Uh, uh, assessment to say yes. There, he's redirecting some of those savings towards maintenance of the home. Let me let me ask you a question, and, and then we'll get to comments. Um, if we were to um, approve this um, uh, exception to the contract limit, and um, may, is there a mechanism that we could say that this is? Um, not precedent setting because of some some reason. Um, my my concern is that I don't want um, other applicants to say, "Well, I've done this and this in the last you know eighteen months, two years," and and then can we get the credit for the Mills Act? Because if the intent of the Mills Act is to is to go forward um, from a particular point in time, not to be retroactive. So, right. is there a mechanism that we could use if we were to approve this exception? Does that question make sense? To I mean, to is, so, so some degree, you could you could make a specific finding as to why you're making an exception or why you're recommending okay. an exception be made because of the um, history of the house. Or, or you can or say whatever. that you you believe that there are significant uh, repairs and improvements still necessary to okay. uh, warrant a, a contract. Okay. So does the commission understand that? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So um, any more questions, comments, Commissioner Murray? I have a comments. Um, I I would agree to go along with this because number one, this is a landmark uh, right. uh, house. Also, whatever they have accomplished is enhancing that landmark in the long run. Uh, it's not a money that's lost. And also, I'm looking towards the five year. They're going to need a roof, and so this is an incentive to to get that roof done down the five, five fifth year. And this, they only have a a program to the for five years instead of the 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so we had done this uh, with the, um, um, well, the, there's a project coming up again. Mm -hmm. Because they're, they basically restore these buildings back to their own most original. And like Mr. DeForest said, this is an important building. Mm -hmm. It was associated with Mrs. Brinkerhoff. It was associated with mm -hmm. the Fancy family, mm -hmm. the Franceschi family. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an important, uh, so I think we can make that distinction, and not every, not every uh, candidate is going to be that way. And, right. and we go by case by case yeah. by I, looking. I but I'm right. looking at all this, you know, electrical to meet code, uh, wood, wind. These are these down the line are uh, are important. The restoration of that driveway to the original place, mm -hmm. that garage, is an important way of maintaining it in the way you approved it to be, and that uh, driveway to it is going to prevent. Uh, erosion and all sorts of other things that can undermine the house as well as anyway. So that, those are my. Yeah, um, I, I would agree my, with you there, uh, Commissioner Murray. Call for the question. I, I'm calling for the question. In other words, I'm asking discussion be occurred and we go with the motion for the project. Okay. Um, would somebody like to make a motion that would have the language yeah. to recommend that the city council? Grant an exception to the Mills Act contract limits outlined in Santa Barbara Municipal Code Section 22.22.160.C.4, parenthetical M, and authorize the Community Development Director to execute a historic property contract for the house located at 2121 Garden Street. So moved with appreciation to the owner. Second. Had a motion by Arias, second by Mahan. Any other discussion? Yes. Commissioner um, Lavoie. And um, the exemption is based upon the importance of the property and the extent of the work um, done and proposed. The I extent of the work, putting it back to its original. I would include that into the motion. Specifically, that it's a landmark. Yeah, I think that's it. Yes. That's the distinction. And you, the maker of the motion is okay with those? what Mr. Lavoie says, and also the identif identifying the property that it is a landmark. Okay. Yeah. Secretary? Just, yes. Okay. And Ms. Sanchez, did you get all that? Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Yeah. You understand the motion? Oh, yeah, and I want to thank, thank the, the commission. We promise you we'll keep the property. You should meet my wife. How should keep property? Yeah. So. <laughs> well, thank you as well. well thank you. I would suggest Commissioner Rios? that if there are a lot of questions about this program, that we put it on the agenda and staff 
discuss it with us so that we don't delay meetings and applicants and things like that. So we're all at the same basic foundation of knowledge on the Mills Act. Okay. Um, I'm going to suggest a break, but we are 35 minutes behind. What's the keep going? Keep going. Okay. Yeah. Go Next item on the agenda is an archaeology report. It's item number seven for 580 Ricardo Avenue. This is a review of a phase one archaeological report prepared by Heather McDaniel and David Stone of Dudek. Copy that. Mr. A. I need to sign it. These, archaeological These are not drafts. Has reviewed the archaeological report for this property at 580 Ricardo Avenue and concludes that the archaeological investigation supports the report's conclusions and recommendations. Okay, I will open public comment. I do not have any speaker slips. I'll close public comments. Ask the commission if they have any questions or comments. Okay. I have a question, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Commissioner Mahan. Yeah, on, on, and they don't number the pages, but um, in the back here where they show pictures, to is something called scatter, primary scatter and secondary scatter. I don't understand. Is it under Appendix B? No. Yeah, no. It's, it's these pictures here at the end, see? It says required information in the lower right. Drawing. Oh, got it. Okay. What, what, is it, what is primary scatter and secondary scatter? Do we know what that is? Mr. Eng? Um, unfortunately, I do not have that information readily available. Is the applicant here? No. Mr. Chair? Commissioner Reyes? On page 8. I'm sorry. On page 8, it talks about uh, the, um, the, the selfish fragments. And um, it's not clipped to you, I don't think. No, yeah, I thought it was. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I'm sorry. Is. Gotcha. Uh, the selfish fragments, and then it says, no subsurface probe were undertaken to determine if the selfish fragments had any depth. That's on page eight. And is that the scattering part that you have? I'm sorry, I'm the architect. I didn't, I didn't write it. Um, I, I believe that you're correct, though. I, I know there wasn't anything located within 400 feet of the property. Yeah, but they, they didn't do any any checking to see if there was anything underneath? That's correct. It's just a phase one, so they didn't, don't, don't do any digging for the phase one. They do the research, but there's no digging for it. Okay. I would imagine that it, it, it's, you know, sec secondary scatter is not <laughs> as important as primary shell scatter. I don't know. Um, well, any other questions? Well, What's that face number? The, I mean, this is up. Yeah. Yeah. This is up along a, a high above the ocean, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> I, I just curious as to how the shells. I guess this is shells, seashells, fragments is what they say. Mm -hmm. Why are they up there? And um, probably be because was, somebody brought them up there. Yeah. Well. Uh, <laughs> you know. Yes, I'm but sure. The Native the Americans were living up there. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. So is that significant? That's the question. It doesn't seem like the report addresses that. Well, uh, what did Dr. Glassow say again, Mr. Eng? Um, it's, it's suggested that the shells were brought up through uh, landscaping that happened. It's so it's suggested that it's not uh, part of an intact prehistoric... Um, well... Okay. Uh, and just the top of the paragraph said the site record explained that AJ. the shellfish, same, same paragraph, was likely derived from the slope washed erosion and rodent burrows. So that, that's how I read it to be. It was the burrows of the rodent, like, likely um, shell material got there through the, uh, through the slope wash yeah. and the rodents. Right. Uh, but if you read on, it says they are more likely to have been imported when efforts to reestablish the landscape and the cut slope was undertaken. So, well, it, there are recommended mitigation measures that you know if if they do encounter this during right. actual construction, they they revisit it at the yep. time. Yep. Yep. Well, since it's on the edge of a road, it's not likely they're going to encounter it in building the swimming pool. Yeah, correct. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? It's interesting to know what. Comments? Of a motion? To accept the report? So moved. 
Yes. With, with Dr. Glasso's yes. recommendations or comments. Yes. So we had a motion by um, Lavoie, a second by Schallenberger. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Do you want some copies? Oh. Next item on the agenda is item eight. This is for 2112 Santa Barbara Street. Action may be taken if sufficient information is provided. Applicant is requesting an exception to the fence and height screen standards for Santa Barbara Municipal Code 28.87.170. Determination required for consistency with neighborhood character. Good Mr. afternoon. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Butterfly. <laughs> All right. Please introduce yourselves for the record and give us a brief presentation. And if we could get the overhead screen back on, please. Barbara Lowenthal, Harrison Design, representing the owner. Welcome. Are these drawings different than... I don't believe so, but I brought up there just in case. Okay. So this drawing that you're rolling out is in this package? Yes. Okay. Maybe we'll just go with this yep. package here. That can be give that one to me. And that can be passed all the way down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right now, folding. So this page is in here? Yes. Okay. Sorry. All right. Oh, well, I'll hold on to that then if you're going to show it on that one. Okay. In case I need to answer a question. <laughs> all right. Please introduce your project. Um, this is 2112 Santa Barbara Street, um, a recent landmark that you landmarked. And um, the owners have been having a problem with people walking up the semicircular driveway mm -hmm. on <laughs> Santa Barbara Street. So they requested that we design some gates that are purely for keeping pedestrians from walking up to their front door unannounced um, for the front. And then. Are they um, electrocuted? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Um, and then new driveway gates off the Padre uh, motor court entrance. The exception that we're asking for, and we're also asking that you make a recommendation to transportation, is for the finials on the two gates on Santa Barbara Street. They exceed the height um, restriction for gates that are within the setback. So we have, I believe, five architectural features that are, uh, the highest one is, uh, I believe, 12 and a half inches above the restriction. What sheet is that on? <laughs> uh, A100. There we go. It doesn't qualify as an architectural projection, huh? Um, well, I thought it did. Yeah. But we were advised by your esteemed staff that um, transportation would look at it differently and that we should get your recommendation that it's approvable and in keeping or with the historic, right, or not, um, with the historic um, nature of the house and compatible with the neighborhood. Okay. You'll see some original details from ironwork on the house, on the sheet. Uh, we did not replicate it exactly because we want historians such as Mrs. Murray to know when she sees something that's a little bit different, that it was done later in time. But we use them as our inspiration. Okay, that concludes your presentation. Yes. I will open public comment. I have one speaker slip from Mr. DeForest. Mr. DeForest. <coughs> Since Please. this house has been a feature on Santa Barbara Street since it was built in 1918 or 17, uh, with this semicircular driveway, has the has something l less landmark uh, imposing landmark dis destruction uh, method of keeping people off the driveway 
considered like just a simple uh, chain uh, with a couple of posts. I think maybe because the house is a landmark, maybe people think they can go up uh, up the driveway and look at the look at the house. They, so I would like to know what, who, what, what is the nature of the intrusion to the occupants by your cars using it to turn around or what? I have no objections to the side, but I don't. I think the introduction of gates and posts to contain those gates will uh, mar the landmark. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if I may. I'm going to actually close public comment okay. and um, bring it to the commission for questions. Um, does the commission have any questions? No. Yes. Are, are we only looking at the exception or the design as well? Both. The okay. design, both. So the question on, can I see the pointer, please? <laughs> um, just looking at the original wrought iron grill pattern here and looking at the replication I suppose here mm -hmm. uh, did this picket run through originally was was there one that ran through here that's that's from one of the original gates in the back so it did not um, run through I don't think so um, it might have but I think it's kind of hard to tell from the original drawing Okay, um, that was one question. The other question was, is maybe for staff, is the is the problem that these pil uh, these pilasters are in the setback, or that they're in the ten foot line of sight for drive visibility? Oh, well, they're existing. They're existing. What's they're what's the exception that we're asking the height for? Of the height of oh, these just little the fence finials. itself. Yeah. Oh, just, just the finials. Finials. I'm just sorry. The sorry, just in yeah. the gate itself. Okay, right. thank you. I have a question. Um, obviously, this driveway slopes up, yes. and the and the gates are opening inward, right. and that is why you have designed exactly. it as such. And and you know that that will clear your grade as the. That's right. Okay, I, I just want a lot of people don't think about that. And no, and that was the reason for that, that design. Deep, right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. And also um, the reason for our pivot hinge being right here, as opposed to here, as opposed to here. Um, because otherwise the gate would have been too large and, and bottomed out. And bottomed out, exactly. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, Barbara, could you answer um, Callum's uh, question? Because I've forgotten um, some of the history. Um, the, 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 the semicircular. The current owners do not use the semicircular drive at all, they use their back um, parking um, area. And. Um, they do, they have, they have a young child and they have had people walking up and into their yard through the front. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't know why that is, um, but it has occurred enough times to make them concerned and for them to feel that having gates at the bottom of the driveway, because we don't want to put in any other element that didn't exist, for instance, Sightage. as you go up, right, or as you go up the drive, there's nothing. There's only the driveway. Um, and to put a gate farther up and put posts farther up is more, um, in Not our view, arc. onerous to the landmark than just using the piers that exist and installing low-profile gates there that are simply a visual deterrent to people um, that it is private property. Do you think a chain would work? No, I do not think a chain would work. I think people would simply walk over it. And I don't think it would be attractive to this beautifully restored. I know you would step over the chain. Mm -hmm. I'd crawl under the fence. <laughs> I'd crawl under the fence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, everybody get a visual of that. <laughs> <laughs> or over the wall. With the neighborhood or with the house. Okay. I, I, I agree. I'm, I'm following through on the public's questions. So that's, well, yeah. Commissioner Schomburg, question? Well, how is that different than basically any house in the city where there's a walkway up to the front door or a driveway to the garage that has no gate or 
Uh, how is this any different than any property? Well, I think many of the properties in this neighborhood do have gates. Mm -hmm. um, and this one simply didn't because for so long it was a uh, nonprofit. And it was open to basically and to the was public. Open to the yeah. public. And yeah. now it's not. And that's a major change. I, I, I know that um, the house that I grew up in had the exact same problem, although there were gates there from day one. Mm -hmm. And I mean, um, we would get people opening those gates and coming into the circular driveway. Well, they know? may have a problem with that. We're hoping they don't. Yeah. I, I mean, finally, we did put a lock on it, but it, it is it is a valid problem. So um, in, in any case, um, let, let, let's hear comments. Commissioner um, Vena, do you have any comments? comments? I like what I see. Okay. Commissioner Arias, any comments? No comments. And I'm looking for comments specifically to the height of that um, over height element, the finial. So if you have anything to add, I want to hear that. Commissioner uh, uh, Lavoie. Um, I, I like the fact that it emulates, not copies, um, the original design. I think it's an attractive design. Um, it's unusual, um, but, I, but I find that interesting. Um, I, I don't think it is going to block the view of the resource. The resource sits, I mean, I, I wasn't aware there was a wall out in front of it. So, you know, <laughs> it sits up high enough that this gate is not going to block a view of it. Um, uh, while, while somewhat limiting access, but this is a single family home. Um, and I would, uh, the, the finials seem an appropriate response to the, the location and the site and um, don't impair, uh, I mean, they're, they're so minor as to not be an issue for granting the exception. Okay, thank you. Commissioner um, Murray? I agree with those comments. Commissioner Schallenberger. I agree. Okay, Commissioner Mahan, anything yeah, else to add? I think it looks great. Okay, would you like to make a motion? I'll make a motion for approval as submitted. Sorry. And could okay. we, I'm sorry. Um, Wait, let, let me finish, please. With the you finding, seconded? With the yeah. finding that, the, that the, uh, the height of the finial is uh, inconsequential. Okay, did you get that, Ms. Uh, Sanchez? So we had a motion by Mahan, a second by Arias, and Arias is okay with that, okay? Um, under discussion, any discussion with the commission? I have a question. Yes. Do I need them to make a specific recommendation to transportation, as we were told? Yes, I and think they said, should recommend it. Yeah, he said that the, the um, height of the finials is inconsequential. Is that a good enough mm -hmm. comment? Okay. Great, right. thank you. Also, um, can I... Dot your eyes, cross your keys. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, can I get a clarification on the approval? Uh, this would need project design approval okay. and uh, final approval. Oh. Right, you're right, thank you. I know, I'm getting there. Okay. Um, are you giving it project and final? Final approval is submitted. The project, please say project design approval and final. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay, project. he said it. <laughs> project. All right. project design okay and final approval. Or... Just do it. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. This decision is appealable to the City Council within 10 days of today's date. Thank you very much. Your plans, man? We only need one more okay. to go. I don't know <laughs> about the rest of you. No, if I, I don't know who owns it, but they are really, it's really has too long. <laughs> we have the applicant here for item 9, 414. Yeah, I saw her. Paula? I saw her and then Could I did Christine, where are you? I saw her come in. They, they saw, saw us and they ran out the door. <laughs> um, I, I think they may have been there. Okay. I am going to suggest a five minute um, break. Okay. okay. <laughs>
Remarks Commission meeting. Next item on the agenda is item number nine. This is fourth concept review, comments only. The project requires an environmental assessment and planning commission review. Project was last reviewed on July 13th, 2016. I will uh, read those comments. The commission feels that this is a nice project and appreciates the applicant's response to comments. Study the use of awnings on the south elevation to add more variety. Um, we revised this, but I think uh, item three said the commission appreciates um, the... <laughs> Uh, size, bulk, and scale of the fourth floor. Uh, consider transposing the common open space and unit 301 to give the former a better view of the ocean. ocean thank you. <laughs> um, continue to develop the fenestration, attempting to add more variety in poetry. Study the depth and interplay of the windows and shade and shadows. The second floor awnings on the west elevation should not be continuous. Pay attention to the corner view from Chapala Street. Looking north, make it a signature special element. Show more of the pedestrian experience from across Chapala Street. Pay attention to the scale. The massing is appropriate to the district and neighborhood. The two massing blocks at the Chapala Street elevation appear too modern. Study the interplay and transparency of the bridge over the automobile entrance exit as well as the massing behind. Show the model drawings without landscape. Landscape trees should be tracery trees, not necessarily palm trees. The motion was made by Schallenberg and seconded by Mayan. It was an 8-0-0 vote. Grumbine was absent. The motion carried. Please introduce yourself for the record and give us a brief presentation. Uh, Christine Perone with the Cornell Collective. Welcome. Laura Bernard with Cornell Collective. Welcome. And uh, Brad Vernon, developer. Welcome. So, um, we appreciated those comments, and uh, one of the things I want to address right away is the comment to study switching the upstairs right. uh, community space and uh, apartment, and I think you can see it here on the site plan. We did look at it, um, but because the lobby is now being accessed off of that kind of pedestrian alley that we're creating along the, the trees that it was really difficult once we had to locate the elevator and stair on the other side of the drive aisle or keep them where they are and somehow get across and it just took up a lot of space on upper levels so we studied it but it just the, the program and the functionality kind of kept these these uh, functions uh, as originally designed things uh, in working with uh, Brad uh, was we wanted to open up in, uh, the yeah, I look at it. third floor more, and this is in, uh, in addition to addressing the HLC comment, so I'll, I'll review that first. Uh, you know, what we have is this kind of wide corridor on the third floor, and we wanted to see some, kind of some openings to get more sunlight in, and so what we did is carved out, took out, reduced the size of this unit and carved a notch, and that shows up here in this elevation. So you get two pieces of architecture now, whereas before this was continuous. Mm -hmm. uh, we also, and this is more internal, but kind of created a courtyard node <coughs> at the end of this corridor, again, to try to get this much more light and air into the units. Um, for your comments, we did uh, look at the... State, uh, the, the Chapala elevation, and as you'll see, the awnings have been separated. We've added detailing that I think start to bring it into uh, away from the uh, blocky design that the commission was concerned with. Uh, the, we really appreciated the comment about opening up this bridge element between the two pieces of architecture, and we took that actually a step forward and went ahead and make it, made it a full deck. So this is now open air deck, uh -huh. yeah, which is, was a, a great decision, I think. Um, the, look at your comments here. So. You know, we've, we've con we'll, we'll continue to play with the fenestration. I think you had a, uh, there are some very good comments about making it much more playful and adding the poetry. And you'll, you'll start to see that we're starting to, to play with these and the smaller p windows, bigger windows that are starting to happen. Uh, you know, we're still studying some elevations that trying to make sense with the interior and exterior, but I think we've come a long way with uh, playing with these these windows. And then the comment was to study the south elevation, and I think it shows up better yeah, in the renderings here. 
So let me as we'll walk you through. So here is looking from you know one side of Chapala. City TV, could you zoom in, please? Magic. And before we had this uh, popping out, this two and three story uh, cantilevered out, so we went with an Innie versus an Audi. Uh, so we we pulled that in. So there's a little bit of roof line, and then kind of punched a a, a little balcony out for the that unit, and then this this roof line kind of keeps cascading down. So I think that'll become like a very nice piece of architecture at this point. And and again, the the, the windows are starting to be played with. And here you can see the other comment about studying some south-facing awnings, and we've started to drop those in. I think we'll continue to look at appropriate places for those, but for now we're, we're working with you on that. Uh, from the other elevation, and here we've added this little roof uh, element. It's, it's still a, a, a parapet roof, but it's, and there's a building in Santa Barbara that has this, and I cannot for the life of me think of what it is, but it has a parapet roof, and then this little skirt detail of roof. That Del is very, building. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So that's what we're keying off of there, a little skirt piece. And then the commission had asked for a kind of a pedestrian experience. So that's what this elevation is showing you. And we do expect, you know, little cafe tables and a, a kind of a lively street presence uh, in front of that restaurant. And then we did do a photo sim. So here's the existing and then the next. And this is taken from the Sevilla, is, shows the model. And that was taken, the, the photo was taken, you know, the, the, most of these are private decks, so we had to get up into this roof tower just so you have a point of reference, the photos taken from there. <clears throat> All right. And you'll start to see some of the walls have been thickened. Um, you know, I think that we'll we continue to study that. I think it would be probably appropriate at this door as a, a punched opening. This door is now punched, and we'll continue to look at that play. I think, again, that was a very good comment to make sure we have that, that play of, of shadow line. And the question about the, you know, the existing landscape, uh, street trees, I think, are the palms. And we've dropped in some tracery trees, but there's no landscape architect on board yet, so these are placeholders just showing the intent. I believe that's a lot of the comments. So with that, I will conclude. Okay. I will open public com comment. And first speaker slip I have is from Sheila Lodge. Miss Lodge, if you could please give up your seat. Thank you. This will be coming to the Planning Commission, but I did want to add to my comments about AUD in general, which this high density, which this is a... Um, an example that whatever any of you have to suggest that would make it this whole business more workable for you, uh, please let me know. Okay. I'd like to, to improve the process. Uh, and a general comment that applies to um, all, all the projects. I, I know some, some of the architects have been saying well, we've got to have 10 foot ceilings because these places are so small. I checked and while the building is, it's still a big building. I know found the found it uh, acceptable. <coughs> it is still overall a very big building. And I checked today with uh, the housing authority, the plate heights and the ceiling heights in Casa de las Fuentes are eight feet. And I've been in those units. They are very livable because they have courtyards. They have places, you know, the, the little patios and so on. So they've got light in them. Uh, and I, I don't think when, when the council said, OK, you can have an extra floor, and normally 45-foot building before was, of course, not in the, well, it was only three feet and 45 feet. Uh, and now four floors are allowed, which has amounted to giving property owners a third more land, which I didn't realize. That didn't hit me right then. Um, the, um, it, I, the building heights 
don't, for livability purposes, need to go to the max. And I think for the community as a whole, um, it would be preferable if they were not. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lodge. Uh, next speaker slip I have is from Mr. DeForest. Mr. DeForest. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, following along with that, with Ms. Lodge's, Lodge's comments, as to, I realize the bulk and scale and height have been sort of okayed, but I do not, I feel that this project is too bulky and too tall for the site. And I am wondering if the, if AUD projects were prohibited in the EPV, could we have smaller and more suitable buildings? I know parking would have to be provided, but I don't think this project as designed is neighborhood compatible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeForest. And I have one email um, from Daniel and Barbara Maloney. Um, to whom it may concern, we would like to voice our strong concern to any and all involved with uh, complaints regarding the erection of a new structure at 414 Chapala Street. We are writing to ascertain if the commission condones the construction of a four-story rental residential property on that site. We purchased our unit in the Sevilla condominium complex at 401 Chapala, directly across from the site of the proposed building at 414 Chapala. The reasons for buying in Sevilla were the location of the property in the downtown area, the beautiful attention to details on the exterior of the building, and the wonderful views of the mountains and evening lights in the Riviera and the Mesa. All three of those reasons did not come cheap. So it is with great concern that we owners of 401 Chapala envision that the proposed structure at 414 will block our views of the mountains. What compromise can we expect from the developers? We would like to be offered plans for a structure of three stories. We would hope that the structure would contain additional parking. We would, of course, like the principals to make money on the project. More importantly, we would not like to lose money because that's exactly what will happen excuse me, what will transpire with the blocking of our views. Sincerely, Daniel and Barbara Maloney. All right, I will uh, close public comment and bring it to the commission. Mr. Chair, may I request a question concerning the plate height so I can address that? Not yet. Um, bring it to the commission for questions. Commissioner Mahan, do you have any questions? Yeah, I think we have some questions. The, the, um I'm looking at the third floor, and it says commercial deck. Yeah. Common, common deck. Oh, common deck. Yeah. Excuse me. A part okay. of the required oh, outdoor. Yeah, it's a common deck. Excuse me, I didn't read that correctly. So common, that's the common deck for everybody to use. That's right. That's the minimum 20 foot by 20 okay. foot. Okay, then, then I'm looking at the south elevation here where you've got the dimensions. I mean, the first floor is zero, and the second floor is 11 feet. I can understand that. Then the third floor, it says 11 feet. So Correct. It really should be like 22 feet, right? But you're, what you're suggesting is that there's 11 feet between? That's how this was done, yes. So it's so, 0 to 11. 11 so the, so those, would be, those, would, those, uh, those units there on the second floor would have 10-foot ceilings? Yes, and I'd like to remind the commission that this also has commercial space on the second floor. Oh, that's right. That's yes. right, yeah. Thank you for reminding me of that. So the third, then the third floor is a ten feet, which will be a nine foot ceilings. A little less mm -hmm. by the time you put in lightweight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and 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 this is this is this is open now, so that that um, rain will fall down into the. Correct, uh, uh, to the third floor, but then it's a covered corridor on the second floor. The second floor would be covered, but the third floor, if you would be. If you come out of the elevator and it's raining, you, you are walking Correct. outside again. Correct. Oh, okay. Quickly. Those are my questions for now, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Schomburger, questions? Uh, just piggybacking on that, what is the, the fourth floor plate height? That's eight foot plate with oh. the expectation that we can do volume ceilings because it's right. the fourth floor. Thanks. Commissioner uh, Murray, any questions? Yeah, so 
Uh, w would you um, mind um, responding to that a letter from the people across the street? W w would you be would you <coughs> block their view? <coughs> well, I think our, you know, what we show here is an image from one of the decks across the street, mm -hmm. and you know the mountain views are still visible. Now, obviously, as you go down a story and down a story, but at some point for a second story unit, if we put up a two story building, we would be blocking views. So I, we think that we have demonstrated a great deal of visibility, even with this project to the mountains. Where were you when you took that simulation? And the only public access was up here. So it was up on the third floor. Third floor. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Lavoy. No questions. Commissioner Rias, any questions? No, just listening. <clears throat> Commissioner uh, Vena, Commissioner Grumbine, any questions? No questions. All right, comments then. Um, Commissioner Mahan. You're starting with me? I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, first of all, I think that, that uh, the architecture is, is very nice. And I think that the, uh, I'm very pleased with, the, with the, the development of the fourth floor, uh, that, it, it, that the size, bulk, and scale of the fourth floor is, is minimized. And I think we had that in our minutes already. And, and I think that really, Essentially, makes this a three-story building with some with some protrusions, which are which are toward the rear of the building, and I think that's that's important and and uh, and it makes it even more acceptable. Um, I like the I like the awnings on the south elevation. I I uh, I think you could play a little more with the windows and and maybe make it a little more uh, a little more variety. Uh, the the front ele west elevation, the front elevation, the, the two two story with the bridge between, I think, has improved greatly. Um, that's between the properties. And this is an AUD. We we all feel like there's not enough parking in the AUD ordinance, but this is what we're getting. Um, as far as the, the comments about the views from across the street, I, I was on planning commission when when we approved Chapala One. And I remember all of the people that lived on the Delavina Street looking toward the mountains said, this building is going to block our views. And of course it did, tremendously. Um, so it's nothing new. When you put up a new building, it does block views. I guess views are not guaranteed unless they're... Um, public views. What? Public views. Yeah, public views, right. So uh, generally speaking, I'm I'm positive about this project. Okay, Commissioner Schallenberger. Um, yeah, I was. Uh, I'm also very positive with uh, regards to the architecture and and it, specifically on the AUD. I, I feel like the applicant has made some efforts to to uh, address the parking uh, with these these deep tandem spaces that uh, I think. Aren't, aren't you over parked slightly? We are. Uh, for the two the bedroom units, park. we are providing right. additional parking. Right. And uh, which is important on the two bedroom units, that's, that drives, that's likely uh, with the, uh, the vehicle usage. Um, also, uh, as far as the massing, I, I wanted to, I, I was interested in doing a little bit of math with regards to floor to floor heights versus uh, how that how that plays out um, with ceiling heights once you add in structure. And, uh, you know, I think you're ending up with, for the units anyway, the commercial I think will have some variation mm -hmm. in terms of being able how you cut that in. But um, I think your, your second floor unit heights, uh, ceiling heights, are going to be more in the 9 foot 6 range than they are the 10 foot. Yes, 99, 96. Yeah, with, with, your, with the structures that are involved. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third floor, it drops down to eight six, maybe something mm -hmm. like that. And then you said the fourth floor is eight foot. So I don't really see that the applicant is asking for these great volume spaces that are uh, so above and beyond. I think they're just trying to, uh, especially on the the second floor units, without the benefit of light, they need some height. Without the benefit of of being on the upper stories. They, they need the benefit of some taller windows and taller doors to bring light into those units. So I, I, I'm not a, I, I, can, I can justify the additional height, or quote unquote additional height, 
I, in, in fact, I think it's, you're not you're not asking for a ton of height to begin with. So I can support this. I supported it before, but now that the math is being done, I think it's proving itself out. That's it. Thanks, Commissioner uh, Murray. Please <coughs> some comments. I I think the applicant has done a, a good job of answering our concerns. Um, to speak to the views, um, if if you buy a condo downtown, um, um, there's nothing that prevents the adjacent property owner from building a building just as big as the one you bought into. You know, you, you need to understand that. Um, that is their right as a property owner. Um, and while we can do as much as we can to, to make that view as pleasant as possible, um, you know, your, your view is going to be blocked um, no matter what happens. And it's, it's somewhat inevitable as, as Santa Barbara becomes more dense. Um, a, as to the specifics of the design, I, I think the, the west elevation... Um, the, the applicant has addressed our concerns um, and is very successful. Um, I think the north elevation is also very successful. There's a nice variety of mass. There's a nice interplay of, of elements. Um, where perhaps it's less successful is the, the south and east elevation. Um, uh, the, the long roof line in the middle just needs to be broken. Um, you know, e either part of it needs to go to a parapet or perhaps cut it back at the decks um, so that that long line just gets broken and that, that long mass of, of tile gets broken in some way. Um, and, and the east elevation, a similar comment. Um, I, I, I also agree that the, I don't find the building overly tall. Um, they've done a nice job of, of making the fourth floor disappear and minimizing it. It feels like a natural part of the building as opposed to we put a big box on top. Um, uh, it, it's, the architecture <coughs> promises to be very, very pleasant and appropriate to the district. Commissioner Rias, any additional comments? Not really. I, I have concerns about the potential for families living in this building with children. Uh, I've stated this before, and also the parking deficit, which I consider also concern. But as far as the architecture and the design of the building, I think that the, that the architect has done a very fine job. And I see that the fourth floor has essentially disappeared in, and there's a lot of sensitivity to what makes a building pleasant to look at. So it's from an architectural standpoint, I think it's fine. From a livability standpoint, I have severe reservations, because, but it's, it's allowed under the AUD, so we have no jurisdiction. Commissioner Vena, any additional comments? Uh, <clears throat> I do. Along the, um, along the adjacent wall that is on the first floor here that extends on the, uh, where is it? on the south elevation here. Talking about right here? Yes. Um, I find it that there should be some interruptions. It's a pretty high wall and basically is not a necessarily in scale for human. It's a human wall. And obviously it's there for security purposes, but maybe some interruptions with buttresses or something, or something coming on that would interrupt that wall so that it would not be so linear. I know you can do it with some potted plants and so forth, but just need some interest, some breakup, some something that would make it a little bit more humane. Commissioner Grambine, any comments, additional comments? Um, the only one, only one comment, um, and I, I saw the, um, uh, the video from before, I wasn't here last time, but I saw the comments that were made before. Good um, <laughs> So I can, so we need more gill. <laughs> I was going to test you on it, but, you know, hey. Um, so, but I, I, the, the only one thing is, and if it's just me, then oh, that's it. But um, the, I'm not sure if the, if the, I think that everything is working out really nicely with the front um, elevation and, and those adjustments in the open air. I think it works great. Um, but it is that little skirt of roof 
it it um, it's, it, it just it seems a little odd and tacked on, and it might you might be able to find a historic example or two um, that actually do that. But um, my argument is always, if you, unless you can find a couple more, then uh, <laughs> it might not be the best thing to do. But if it's just me, then it's just me. But I don't. I think that that was the least successful of the resolution resolving the design ideas that um, that were put forward last time. So I think I, it's very commendable, um, and the adjustments have been great. That was the one piece that still looks a little bit unresolved to me, um, where everything else has been successfully resolved. So, And the height thing, I agree. I think it's, in terms of a four-story, this is about as good as you're going to get for this density. Okay. I will summarize the comments. Could I, could I follow up on that? Yeah. yeah. Um, while I somewhat agree, I'm, I'm familiar with what the, what they were emulating. We were talking just so I, I'm clear. We're uh, talking the, about the, here the parapet yeah. and, right. the, and the eyebrow roof. That that perhaps if if the um, railing wall above was set back from the face of of the wall below by maybe a foot, it, um, it might be more credible and and successful. Okay. You agree? Or? Yeah, yes. I do. Yeah. I do. It was that open, I know they're going to have a little bit of challenge with the open, but uh, the open uh, common deck area requirements, because it's just over 20 feet, they were saying they needed 20 by 20, but, yeah. we can stick but you guys are good. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's really good comment, that's what I was going to yeah. talk about. That that Paso's one, it's, it's more like a, it's not a second story. Right. So, so. Can we call that an eyebrow roof, is that? It's what? Probably it would be Paul. I have a skirt, but... Skirt. I have a skirt. I have a skirt. I have a skirt. I'm going to get in trouble with somebody. That's his comment. I'm not sure, but it sounds like I might get in trouble with somebody. <laughs> okay. I think, I think traditionally the... The the uh, the eyebrow, as we call it, those, those that would be supported by the by the roof rafters, which would be which would be uh, cantilevered out mm -hmm. uh -huh. beyond the wall, and then the parapet, uh, which which would have been done, you know, so you could put the roofing up to the side, that would be maybe an 18 inch or a 16 inch or two okay. foot parapet. I think I've got a way to fix it, so I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll summarize that comment and we'll see how it works. Okay. Um, architecture is coming along and is developing nicely. The awnings on. Uh, the building are an improvement. The fenestration still needs more development and fine tuning. Parking does not appear to be a major problem, especially with the use of the deep tandem parking as proposed. The plate heights, particularly on the second through fourth floor, do not seem to be excessive. Private views are not governed by the city or its review boards. Only public views are. The north and the west elevation are successful. The east and the south need more breakup particularly with the roof tile. There should be some articulation or breakup of the wall on the north property line, specifically as it relates to the pedestrian. The eyebrow forward slash skirt <laughs> roof on the northwest corner needs more study and substantiation. Perhaps set the parapet wall back from the building face below the eyebrow forward slash skirt. How's that work? No, no not no? below. Okay. Pre-verbal corrections. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, uh, in, in, in talking about the fenestration, uh -huh. fenestration um, still needs more, more development. More development? No, it needs more variety. Let's okay. be mm -hmm. clear about what we're talking yep, about. Thank you. Um, and the roof tile doesn't need more variation. It's the roof form needs more variation. Okay, so that's the north and west elevation is and, successful. And I don't think the eyebrow needs more substantiation. It okay. just needs, that was plain just off needs, of... needs to be restudied as to its relationship mm -hmm. to the wall below. That's fine. Okay. Did, did you get that, Ms. Yeah. Sanchez? <clears throat> Isn't this a pretty bare wall? I'll make a motion for no, a two-week continuance. Second. Uh, yes, I think two weeks will do. Yeah. You want Motion by Lavoy, second by Mahan. Under discussion, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? 
Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned.